Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank the Father for the privilege of being alive today to witness His goodness and mercy the way He has ordained it. And we thank Him for the privilege that today is the body of uh, Pastor Grace. And um, uh, she's been not just a wife, but um, a friend, a counselor. She's been a companion in the gospel. She's been one with whom we have been the joint heirs of life and also been involved in ministry together from 1996 till today. And all that the Lord has pleased the Lord to do, whether in our rise between Assembly of London or Global School of Ministry Worldwide or International Ministers Fellowship Worldwide, is simply because both of us, by His grace, came together as the Lord proposed it. And we didn't come together as husband and wife. As you count it, we came together because in the divine purpose, in Elohim's mind, he wanted to bring together two different people he redeemed to become one so that through us and with us, he would do what he's doing in the air trim. And I want to say happy birthday to you, Pastor Grace. Thank it's you. such a wonderful thing. Thank you. That we've had 22 plus years of yes. marriage, you know. And um, uh, what would you say about life in general? Wow, wow. We thank the Lord for everything and we give him praise. And then um, it's um, 52 today. Yes. Wow. You know, you look back when you were quite young, it looks like 52 is far-fetched. I remember when we were quite young, you talk about 50. Mm. Wow. When I get 50, you know, it looks like, but here we are. Yeah. And then life. <laughs> <laughs> it's 52, brethren. And then you're like looking back and saying, what is it all about what life? What is it all about? It's all about Yeshua. Yeah. Actually, brethren, for these 52 years, I can look back and I can tell you that life without him mm. is nothing. Absolutely. Absolutely nothing. You know, the older you grow, yeah. you know, when you are young, it looks like the world is in your pocket. That's right. But actually, you know, with that young mind, the world is bigger than our pocket. That's right. You just want to try out things. You just want to do things. And then it looks like it can't come back. The older you go, mm. you know, when the Paul was talking, he says, Paul the aged. Yes. You know, there's something in with age. And if you look back and you say, what is it? And actually, by the time you look, he says, what is it that, you know, what David says, was it, who are we that the Lord is mindful, mindful of us? Absolutely nothing that the Lord is mindful of us. So, brethren, what we do is, sorry, Apostle, we go to the door to yes, make sure someone that's is, right. Yeah. yeah. Just Looking one minute, go ahead. So, brethren, what is it that life, we, he is mindful of us? Absolutely nothing, brethren. I look back and I say, thank you, Yeshua. Thank you for the life. Thank you, Lord, that we have spent it together with him and then to, you know, put back th put things together in him. Hallelujah. So, brethren, today we are looking back and I say, well, back to the day I got born again. And please don't mind the distraction out there, just um, everyone. So we look at how we got born again, how we got to know the Lord and then what we are doing. And then with this together, you ask yourself and says, well, Lord Jesus, have your way in our life. Have your everything about us is in you and in you. Hallelujah. So, brethren, we can see here that the most important thing is what did you do with your life? It's a huge testimony from the time I gave my life to the Lord, Yeshua, Jesus. You know, it is absolutely fantastic. Brethren, I can tell you, all these years has been absolutely, Paul the Apostle says that, you know, the, our Lord Jesus told us that life does not consist in the abundance of things which a man possesses. It does not consist in it. But rather, our life is all about what we do with it. That's why Paul the Apostle says, I press towards the mark. Yes, I know people during birthdays, it's all about, you know, thank God for all the celebration, you know, giving the Lord glory for another year. 
which he had added to us. But most important is no, it's not just you know the quantity of the years, but the quality of the years. The quality of the years, what the Lord has added to us, what we have done with the life that the Lord had given to us. What did we do with it? Did we fulfill our purpose here on earth? Because it's a journey. It's actually, brethren, life is a journey. Look through is a journey. Year in year, it's 52. And I'm counting towards, not backwards, but towards. You know, all of us pray and say, Lord, help me to get to a ripe old age. Yes, by the grace of Elohim, if Yeshua tarries, we will get there. But the most important thing is we are going to somewhere to see our maker one day, to close our eyes to go. What did I do with this life? Is it quality? How many souls did I win for him? How many people did I disciple for him? How many missions did I do for him? His purpose and plan for me to fulfill his way in my life, did it come to pass? Was it accomplished? Brethren, these are the kind of things that we look in and we say, what had the Lord called me to be? If the Lord had called you in the church just to be an usher, have you done it to the best year in, year out? You're adding, you know, you know, more and more expertise, grace, and beautiful thing the Lord had called you. Had the Lord called you in the church just ordinary to visit? We may call it ordinary, but remember that when you visit brethren, you strengthen them. When you strengthen them, you add, you know they are encouraged in the Lord. How many have you visited? How many have you looked into? How many have you cared for? If the Lord had called you to sing in the church, have your singing given the Lord glory over the years? Or have you merchandised it? Or have you used it to, you know, you know, gratify the flesh? How many people can say the voice the Lord had given to you? Look at what it is here on earth. Brethren, this is all about, you know, adding more years to the Lord and all the birthdays and all the things that follow it. This is all about it. And when we look into the scriptures, our Lord Jesus says, he has set, the Bible says, he has set his face to go to Jerusalem. It comes a day that our journey here on earth finishes. So what actually are we doing with it? And this is all about, you know, birthdays is a time of taking stock, is a time of looking back, is a time of saying, look, I'm going to see my maker, the ministry he had committed into my hand. How have I carried it? How have I done it? Have I been taken away out of the way? Because there's only one message, brethren, all of us need to preach. And that is the message of the good news that Yeshua Jesus had come to save the lost. He says, I had come and in him are all things. Hallelujah. And that is what we look back to. You know, when I look at it, I say, Lord, thank you for the children. Yes, they came. Not that, you know, they didn't come ordinarily. You know, with the eyes of man, they wouldn't have been there. Glory be to the Lord. Thank God for calling me into salvation. Hallelujah. Which is the most important thing that we've given our life to him. Of all the millions of people here on earth, the Lord chose us and he called us into his own kingdom, brethren. It's a privilege. And I wonder, it says, what is it that I did for you? Is it that I was more better? No, absolutely. Is it that I loved him more? Absolutely no. Is it that was a chance privilege thing? Absolutely no. That the Lord has of all the millions and billions of people and has says, look this one in that tiny little corner you are. He had called you and says you are mine and had given you a name, given your life, given you a ministry, given you a purpose and you are among the very tiny few who are following him according to his plan and divine purpose. Brethren is what celebrating, is what dancing around for, is what shouting hallelujah, hallelujah to them, you know, as much as you can. Brethren, this is what life is all about. That you look back and you say, glory be to the Elohim. The, whole, the Lord had called me into church planting and by the grace of Elohim, I've been part of it. 
Amen. The Lord has called me into discipleship and by his grace, I look back and I can see that those you've discipled are today in ministry, not just babes as Christians, but also fellow ministers of the living God. It's you know, absolutely amazing. One of them last two weeks, you know, just sent a line to me and I'm like, what? And I went back again to see, and he is a minister in the church where we have left. Hallelujah. You look back, he says, glory be to Elohim. The Lord had called you into be into faithfulness, into serving him in the house of the Lord, serving brethren. And you look back and you're still serving. You've not been taken away from it. You know, a lot of people have been taken away. You know, when fame comes, when you're growing in the Lord, pride, are, especially when men lift you up, you will forget that the Lord had called you to serve others. Brethren, that's what we are called. So when we are celebrating, I know a lot of people, we celebrate their certificates, they celebrate, you know, all they've achieved, their house, their cars, and their everything, and their dancing, and their, but there's much more to that. And that much more is when we live here on earth and stand before our maker, there's certain things that he will bring out. He says, I called you to do this. Are we going to say, yes, Lord, I did it. And brethren, you know, yesterday, you know, quite much early when we were praying, Apostle says, let's pray into your new year. And as we were praying, it just came out from the heart and from the mouth, not thought. I was even wondering that it's not me that said this, but it says that my desire, the new year is that more souls have more to disciple for him. Hallelujah. More to look after for him. We are not, we can be. We can't get tired in the kingdom of the Lord. He's only 52. Caleb was 85 when he says, give me this mountain. He's only 52, brethren. There's still a lot to do. Paul the apostle says, it's not like I have arrived, but one thing I seek after. We, brethren, we want to press forward. We want to reach that mark. We want to make sure that what the Lord has appointed to us. We look around in our community. A lot of people are still lost in our community. A lot of people are still in alcoholism. They are still on drugs. They are still not there. Brethren, we still have work to do to give them a hope, to give them life, to say to them, there is hope in Christ Jesus. He's still there, brethren, we need to do. There are a lot of people out there who are brokenhearted out of disappointment or things that have done in life. A lot of people are depressed because of things didn't work out the way Brethren, we still need have work to do to give them hope. The next generation is coming. We still need to transfer. We still need to impact. We still need to get them on, to carry on. If Yeshua tarries, all these things are work to be done. It's still huge. There are still nations to be reached out to. All these things are looming large before us. There are still joy to spread. Hallelujah. Yes. Joy to spread everywhere. Brethren, it's still why we are here, to spread the joy joy of Elohim, the joy of Yeshua. There's still hope to extend to people. There's still salvation to preach to people. There's still a lifeline to throw out there. So brethren, it's an exciting thing. It's really quite exciting. So are you there and you are 52 or you are not yet 50 and you're looking at yourself, you're counting age and your knees are getting arthritic and then all that and you're doing this and you're counting yourself. You Look, it's 52, is nothing. A day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. We count age and time and moon and days, but with the Lord is not so. Hallelujah. It is not so. It is time to now vibrantly reach out to the Lord. It's now reach out to the world. It's now time with all our hearts to say, Lord, what else do you want me to do? Here am I, send me. Here am I, Lord, send me. Is the time to keep ourselves fit for him, to serve him. It's wonderful, brethren, when we sit back. So birthdays is all about standing still and say, Lord, what have I done with the years you've given to me? How fruitful is it? How even but in the secular world and out there in the spiritual world, we ask the Lord, what have I done? What impact have I made in these 52 years? Can anyone say I've impacted their lives? Can anyone say through her I came to know the Lord? Can anyone say through her I'm strengthened? Can anyone say through her a lifeline was thrown to me? This is what counts. 
as we count age and as we go. And as we look back, brethren, we see absolutely that the world is absolutely empty. Very, very empty. Nothing is in it. Nothing without the Lord. Brethren, for me, what for me, having gone through, you know, my children and I were counting how many years I've said, been in school until 2005 when I came to the UK. We only saw that it was only three years from age four that I've been out of school. So it's been one school to the other, from primary school to secondary school, to going in from secondary school, went to do nursing, nursing to midwifery, midwifery to BS in health education, health education to postgraduate diploma in management, from there to master's in project management. Before I came, it's all about one thing. I can't count how many seminars and how many programs and how many other certificates, but all those things are done without Jesus Christ. I look back. I can't even say that. Oh, a lot of people say, oh, where did you get all this knowledge and all those things? But brethren, the most that counts, the most that counts is that I know him mm. and I know the power of his resurrection. Brethren, when I look back, the only thing tangible I have all these years have nothing to do with the secular and all the achievements and all the working as a senior manager and all those things is nothing but that Yeshua, I have him, hallelujah, and his power, and I know him and the power of his resurrection. This is what matters the most, and I can look back and I say, thank you, Messiah, thank you, Elohim, I'll serve you to the rest of my life. I look forward until he comes, until he tarries. I know the number of years he had called me be fulfilled. But brethren, here we are. This is all about birthdays. It's nothing else. I repeat it again, but to take stock. is to glorify him. is to say hallelujah. You know, I remember my days. I can tell you from the time I got born again, went into missions. What joy it gave me to be out there. While others were getting married, I was outside in the missions. From one, you know, mountain to the other, rivers and crossing and village and being there and then walking miles and miles. I look back to my life in all the church planting. You know, one of the days we have to run absolutely nearly 34 miles to go and plant a church. I look back again as a young, you know, leader in the church when I was being transferred from one church to the other to go and lead in the churches, to go and anyone they plant newly, of course, I'm being sent there. Brethren, I look back to those days of morning Christ, to those days of walking, you know, you know, crusades of all types and right there. I look back to those days when you look back and say, look, because I'm there, I'll be called into the choir. I don't have the voice. They will use me to do the bass. You can imagine because the voice is not there and the lack in prayers, in everything, in follow-up, in, you know, I remember those days, you know, at a point in my Christian life, when our church then, if you are asked to come and summarize such descriptions, you've gone far. One day, the pastor called me and says, you will be summarizing such descriptions. You know what it means? It's like in Sunday school. When it finishes, everybody will ask you questions from what was taught and what was outside not taught. And you expected to answer each of them from the scriptures. Brethren, I was nearly like collapsing. But I, need, I want to thank the Lord. I remember those. It helped me to, you know, continue to, you know, thrive more in the Lord and in Yeshua. Hamishah, it was absolutely fantastic. Remember those days, you know, going on in the leading young people from that fellowship. And one day I was asked that I need to write for a, a national. I was like, me? For a national and I wrote, and they used it. It was absolutely, the children, and when I was called, it's absolutely fantastic. When I was asked to leave that, to join the campus fellowship, to look after the other young people, since I went through the campus, it was stunning, brethren. When I was also moved into the adult fellowship, it was a joy for me. Absolutely. It's not like it was all oh, the persecutions there. <laughs> brethren, it was at another level. Thank God for today that nobody sees them. It's not there. It was those days that literally what you have is thrown back into the church. I remember when I started walking and then, then I was made the assistant pastor of the church. And here, alas, old people, children not going to school. Brethren, it was a time that salary comes. I was okay with one sandals. 
okay. I was okay with five dresses. And once that salary comes, it goes to school fees, it goes to sandals, it goes to notebooks, it goes to all those things. Joy. Brethren, we can look back and say, thank you, Lord, for a 50, a fulfilled 52 years. It's absolutely and then when we come and the Lord is expanding the ministry, uh, the joy I have today is that I can still serve my brethren. I can still watch. I can still give them food to eat. Watch the play they eat. Go to visit them at midnight. Whatever is the time, drive them around. It doesn't matter who you are. I'm very privileged to carry God's children and to do it. Brethren, for me, this is life. For me, this is joy. For me, this is fulfilling. Is absolutely, and all of us sit back and say, what have I done for him? When he calls me home, when he says, well done, faithful servant, amen. Or will he say, mm, along the line, you left me. Along the line, you went into it, you went into preach other gospel that is not mine. Along the line, you were not encouraged. You were not talking about me again to point people to show them to me. But brethren, this is where we are. And this is all about the 52 years. I have no other testimony but to say, thank you, Yeshua. And here am I. Use me. Here am I at any point. How you want it is okay. It's fine for me. Hallelujah. And then at this point, I want to, you know, um, call in um, Bishop and Apostle. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, I just want to say something. She didn't just do that when she was young and single. When we got together in marriage, it even became more. She did far more. And I'll say something later. Let me ask Bishop Stafford, who was there when we married and who we have related with since 1996 to come and say something. Bishop Stafford, please come. Wow. <laughs> I wonder what you say, Bishop. <laughs> that is wonderful. That is gracious. Amen. I am so glad and happy to be a part of this. Mm golden jubilee mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god golden jubilee plus yes because <laughs> <laughs> plus two <laughs> plus two <laughs> wow it's so it's so mm -hmm. it's so glorious mm -hmm. it's so wonderful to actually see how it all somehow began mm -hmm. and then to the point which god has led uh pastor grace and uh, Apostle George and the children to this point. Uh, Pastor Grace is a great woman of God. She is a vessel of honor in the vineyard of God. She is a mother in the kingdom. And God has so much given her grace. I start to wonder, is it because she is called grace? <laughs> <laughs> so much grace that has, uh, you know, energized her, rejuvenated her, revitalized her into doing exploits at various life's endeavor i i am so flabbergasted and i sometimes lack what to actually express or try to talk about this great woman whom god has given to our generation as a gift a very precious gift thank god when you look at her passing and then you see that uniqueness very intelligent and hard working and when you look at her marriage you see you see that uh, faithfulness you see that uh, attitude that attitude of submission, 
that attitude of commitment and the way God used that to actually do all she does and then combining it with the work of the ministry. And there is no trouble at home. The marriage, very enviable. And then the family, looking at the children, and you see children that had good upbringing. Children that are tutored under godly parents. And children that are examples. Of Christian children. So everything about grace is so extraordinary. It's miraculous. And um, I want to wish her <laughs> a happy, happy birthday. God bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord strengthen you. The Lord give you more years, more birthdays, more grace to move on until you have completely achieved your destiny in this generation to the glory of Elohim. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Not easy to sit down <laughs> and then all these things is being said about you. Not <laughs> Amen. Okay, I just want to say this to you all. It's been an amazing thing to, you know, experience the life and ministry of Pastor Grace to me, to the children, and to all the brethren across the world. I know I speak for all the brethren who have been pouring their birthday wishes uh, that this is just appreciation, Pastor Grace. You Thank know, you. Uh, we, we love you all so much, everyone, the brothers and sisters. Mommy, they, they want me to convey this to you. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been an amazing vessel. Thank you. And, thank uh, we, you, everyone. We thank the Father for His grace, okay? okay. Uh, we thank the Father for His grace. Those on Daybreak with the King would like to, you know, wish you happy birthday. So, those on Facebook Live, I'm going to sign off right now so that those on Daybreak with the King can do some birthday wishes to her, okay? Bless you. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen.